Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this first presentation. Um, today, our topic of discussion is multinodal quarter. Uh, you'll have a detailed discussion on the topic in the lectures. Here, we are going to discuss uh, the uh, gross picture and the microscopic picture with and will link it to the clinical picture as well now uh, why uh, knowing about this entity is very important that this is actually the most common manifestation of thyroid disease uh, in general population uh, you'll see a lot of cases in your clinical practice uh, in your practical life presenting to you a lot of people with enlarged neck masses and many of them are going to be thyroid masses I won't go into the detail of uh, how uh, to look for uh, the signs and symptoms in the patient in detail um, because that's not part of the uh, part of today's presentation. But um, briefly, the patient presents to you with a large swelling. Uh, you carry on a clinical examination, and with with that, with the help of that, you suspect it's a thyroid swelling and then you uh, carry out appropriate investigation and then you decide to operate upon them now the kind of question you may be asked uh, particularly uh, with respect to an OSCE uh, you may be given a gross picture you may be given a microscopic picture and to in order to understand that you need to remember that morphologically there are three um, uh, varieties of uh, a goiter diffuse goiter uh, then colloid goiter and multinodal goiter now these three can be looked upon um, as a continuum of each other first diffuse then colloid in diffuse goiter uh, there is a diffuse symmetric enlargement i'll explain the histology on the photomicrograph and colloid goiter the name indicates there will be a lot of colloid and uh, uh, the third stage multinodal goiter. Now remember, most of the patients are going to present in the multinodal goiter stage, uh, and in that stage, the thyroid uh, appears to be multilobulated and it's enlarged asymmetrically generally. Now, when a specimen is received in the lab, we ink it, we serially uh, section it. And what we see, the first thing which we see, as the name indicates, is there are multiple nodules. There are multiple nodules, multiple variable size nodules, and colloid is also visible in this uh, specimen. Now, as it's a long standing process, uh, we've tried to understand that it's a part of a continuum. Multinodal goiter uh, specimen may have different areas showing calcifications and different areas showing fibrosis as well so area of calcification would be hard area of fibrosis would be firm um, uh, on gross inspection uh, we'll discuss the microscopy on uh, with respect uh, with the help of the photomicrograph now this is a gross picture as we always try to describe the specimen first um, try to exercise that uh, in your homes now that uh, if, if, if I ask you to describe the specimen for me uh, you might say that it's it's brown colored multinodular multilobulated thing which okay now we know that it might be a thyroid and um, there are uh, areas these white colored different areas as well now in this specimen if, if if the cursor is visible to visible to you i hope this cursor is visible this is an nodule this is a nodule this is a nodule this is a nodule and you can see there are variable size uh, nodules uh, there are different sizes and the shiny areas uh, you see is the colloid we talked about now these white areas represent the areas with calcifications um, 
they these areas of calcifications may be present may not be present but practically speaking what i have seen most of these specimens show areas with calcifications um the size is variable this may be larger than the one that is uh, um, shown here they may be smaller than the one shown here but generally remember the uh, gross picture as multinodular the question is asked you the most likely uh, uh, scenario with respect to gross is going to be that the specimen showed a multinodular or a multilobated cut surface with uh, brownish gelatinous areas which presents colloid and there are areas of calcification and fibrosis something like that okay now moving on to histology this um, is a photomicrograph from a specimen uh, like the one we've seen in the uh, gross picture um, these are multiple variable sized follicles I'm sorry you're going to have a, 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 a diagram a, a photo micrograph close to this maybe this close to this or somewhat like this uh, it's almost the same the presentation is almost the same uh, there are variable sized follicles remember with respect to histology of this entity there are variable sized follicles you can see here this is a very large follicle this is another large follicle and these are the smaller ones but what's common is, is that they are lined by cuboidal to columnar epithelium sometimes it may be a flattened epithelium and in the center this pink area is the colloid so you can see colloid here 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 and this this is the lining epithelium which may be cuboidal which may be columnar which may, might be flattened in some cases another feature look for which is seen in some um, not a very important feature for you probably but which is seen which is visible here as well and which might be visible in other areas don't call it a papillary carcinoma if this is visible are these small short papillae if somebody some, like wants to ask you papillary carcinoma thyroid they'll tell you other features of papillary carcinoma the nuclear features the new features of atypia which we'll talk about in detail in the papillary carcinoma thyroid presentation now these uh, these infoldings might be present so when you look at them don't call it a papillary carcinoma thyroid the main point to remember is is the same that we always talk about uh, fitting everything uh, uh, every part of the puzzle correctly a patient with diffuse asymmetrically enlarged thy thyroid uh, with characteristic cut surface with this histology variable sized thyroid follicles uh, lined by so and so epithelium filled with colloid no atypia no nuclear changes is most likely it's going to be a multinodular multinodular quarter they're asking about and um, remember the an, a, important thing on gross is that they are multiple multiple variable sized nodules uh, okay now if you have any questions you can uh, send your questions to me this is the refer reference for your uh, for this presentation um, I hope this experiment goes fine let me know if there are uh, any technical difficulties uh, in viewing this presentation so that we can work on it there might be some bear with us, bear with us we're working on a lot of things right now okay you have to send me the answers uh, to um, the uh, MCQs or NACQ if we, if we do ask one at the end of any presentation in order uh, uh, in order to get your attendance map thank you